What's up, Michigan? Welcome back to State Champs Extra Point. I'm Lauren Plant. I am joined again by State Champs Scout Team aficionado Scott Bernstein. This program is proudly presented by Lawrence Technological University. You know, you can play college football. LTUS Athletic and Academic Scholarships right now. Recruit yourself by going to ltuathletics.com. It's regional time, and we have a passion for recognizing outstanding performances. From what I understand, Scott, you are burning on the scintillating signal callers of the postseason, yes. correct? Dynamic dime droppers in the playoffs, guys that are blossoming into stars before our very eyes. We're going to shout a couple out. Now, on the companion podcast of Extra Point, we're talking with Grand Blank headman Clint Alexander. Now, before the playoffs began, I predicted Grand Blank would win the Division I state title, even though the Bobcats hadn't won a district since forever. Now, that changed with their 49-28 win over Howell last weekend. We'll talk with Coach Alexander about this already historic season. But first, what happened in some of the biggest matchups of the district championships? Let's recap. We start in Division Three. The defending state champs 9-1 duet at home taking on unbeaten Mount Pleasant. Mr. Football candidate Ty Holtz hitting his favorite target, the Wisconsin recruit Tommy McIntosh, for four touchdowns and route to a 50-26 win. Next up, 9-2 Cedar Springs in the regionals. To Division 4, 10-0 Chelsea at home taking on 8-2 Milan. Remember the former MSU Spartan Nick Hill when he ran wild at Chelsea? Well, he has a younger brother in Trenton who's been lighting up the scoreboards. He rushed for four TDs, has 31 on the season as the Bulldogs took care of Milan 49-12. They'll face the defending state champ 7-3 Detroit Country Day on Friday night. Let's head to the showdown between 7-2 River Rouge and 9-1 Detroit King in the D3 district finale. This is a rematch of last season's regional title tilt. Our number one team in the state, the King Crusaders, were led by the play of Mr. Football candidate Dante Moore. Through for three scores, King gets revenge on River Rouge 33-12. Next up, 9-2 Allen Park. Moving on to Division I, for the second time this season, 8-2 Sterling Heights Stevenson mixing up with 7-3 Chippewa Valley. The Big Reds held a 28-14 lead into the second half, but these Titans would battle back, tied the game up at 35. Remaining moments of the game, Stevenson going for the game-winning field goal, and Kyle Castle earned a new nickname, Clutch. As time expires, Sterling Heights Stevenson wins a thriller 38 to 35. They'll have another Mac Red opponent to face at 8 and 3 Macomb, Dakota in the regional final. All right, guys, Scott Bernstein, cream rising to the top. Temperature rising. Yes. And, you know, when the temperature rises, when, you know, the brightest lights are shining on the football field, the biggest stars come out to play. And we're seeing some big time performances by, you know, kids that are blue chippers, kids that are, you know, knocking on the door for offers, and then kids that might never play college football, but are great high school football players. Love what I see from DeWitt. Uh, obviously, we know about Ty Holtz, Tommy McIntosh. Yeah. What a special playmaker at split end. Yeah. They're going to love him in Madison. I see a huge upside. You know, I love making the comparisons to either, you know, current NFL guys or former NFL guys. I mean, this guy's got Julian Edelman, yes. Wes Welker uh, written all over him, but he's taller. Yes. So, uh, you know, love to see that. Great game between River Rouge and Kane. Great game. All instant classic between Stevenson and Chippewa Valley. Um, you know, Stevenson has that three-headed monster of, of senior vets. Biagio Madonna, who's just got, every time I talk about him, he's just, he's dripping with swagger uh, in the pocket. Yes. He can, you know, I think he's the first quarterback in Stevenson history to throw for over, I think, 2,000 yards and rush for over 1,000 um, for his career. What, what, a, uh, what a tremendous legacy he leaves. And then, you know, Jordan Katkowski, uh, Jordan Ramsey, those guys are going to be remembered for decades. Yes. Uh, in Titanville, and then, you know, Detroit King, the five-star quarterback, Dante Moore, you know, delivering those sugar dimes all over the field. We got another, you, you know, we got another, like, three or four weeks of him, hopefully, yeah. and then we got a whole another year of him yeah. coming up next season. Uh, so, so many special playmakers around the MHSAA right now. 
Extra Point is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association. Officials are desperately needed. Become an official. Go to MHSA.com for details. Help wanted, just whistle. I also invite you to listen to the Extra Point Companion Audio Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. As partners with the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association, we love talking football with coaches. Now, in the over 100 years Grand Blank has played football, they've only won one district championship until now. So we had a chance to catch up with head coach Clint Alexander. Here's some of what we talked about. Coach, uh, there seems to be a kind of a fundamental shift and maybe just in the last couple days now that, uh, that the Grand Blank football program has now kind of officially turned the corner. Uh, you know, for, for so many years, and I say this with all due respect, for so many years, it was like Grand Blank had all this talent, and sometimes they would have really good regular seasons, and then something would happen in the playoffs, and it was like a, maybe a mental hurdle. And now it, it appears that like all of that has been pushed to the wayside. Everyone's dialed in, and it just seems like this is a, a, a different brand of Bobcat football that looks to me that like they've broken through that glass ceiling and they're not going to be having those same we can't predict the future but it, it seems like this group has really made a mark in in regards to getting this program to a level they haven't been at before can you kind of talk about that progression yeah um you know it's our fifth year so we've had five years to to develop our culture build our program and, and try to address some of those things that you, you've talked about um, you know, I'd heard that before I came, tons of talent, um, don't seem to be able to get farther than the regionals. So we sat down to look at what do we got to do? Well, we put in a great strength program. We implemented two platoon football because we've got a ton of kids and, and we want to develop our kids. There's a recruiting frenzy that goes on in Genesee County. And so one of our biggest challenges was to keep our kids because everybody was trying to take them. So this class we kept together, they've lost one game in their career. They bought into everything. They're playing complimentary football. We're, we're good in all three phases, and, and we're physical. And, and if you're going to play this deep in the playoffs, you have to be physical. That entire interview is available on the Extra Point Companion podcast. Our podcast platform of choice, Spreaker.com. Just search State Champ Sports. We've got a ton of podcasts we do here on the network, and I know now that your ears are burning but before we scratch that itch, let me just shout out Hungry Howie's for not only sponsoring the Mr. Football and the Anvil Award, but also for sponsoring Extra Point. Scott, legends are made in the playoffs, and perhaps the single position most in the spotlight are the signal callers, and you've got some shout outs. Yeah, we have a lot of fearless field generals just going bonkers in the postseason. Yeah. Guys that are making a name for themselves, making a reputation for themselves and their programs. Yeah. Um, I want to start with lightning in a bottle in Livonia. Zach Olasek is having an outstanding postseason run. We started to see flashes of this last year as a junior. He is one of the more dynamic dual threat quarterbacks in Metro Detroit. Not a lot of people know about him. I'm shocked that uh, the GLIAC isn't more in on this kid. Uh, he's definitely showing what he can do in the playoffs. And I wouldn't be shocked if one of those GLIAC schools get in on him before the end of the month. Uh, if we're talking about some young gun dime droppers, a couple of uh, sensational sophomores out of Oakland County, Raquez, uh, Raquez Nance for West Bloomfield. I call him Ric Flair, dripping with finesse. He's starting to do it more uh, throwing the ball than you know his trademark uh, juke moves where he's on the run. He's in the open field. He has gone to the house, but he can also throw the ball. It's got a little Kyler Murray in him and look really good uh, in the uh, end of the first half last week against Catholic Central. Threw a dagger uh, to D'Angelo Thomas right before the end of the first half. Uh, gave those Lakers all the momentum going into the second half, grabbing that fifth straight district championship. Moving over to Waterford Mott, Caleb Osborne, maybe the most upside of any quarterback in the state's class of 24 right now. He is Lamar Jackson with Cam Newton size and strength. Uh, this kid at, you know, for, for his first season as a starter, he's over 1,500 yards throwing, he's over 1,500 yards rushing. He does everything. I see a potential four-star rating coming on him really soon, and I expect a number of uh, Division One programs to be getting in on him over the off season. Uh, let's move on to some uh, Johnny Moxon dime droppers, some Fitz Magic dime droppers, some JJ McCarthy dime droppers, the backups that have stepped in and have 
flourished when their teams that needed them the most. Mark Gochai, the senior for Brother Rice, uh, stepped in and really saved the season when Hunter Polanke went down. He's looked great, led him to a district championship. And then over on the west side of the state, Grand Rapids Catholic Central, John Passanault yeah. has stepped in for Joey Football. Right. Got them moving, uh, trending towards Ford Field again. So uh, give a, a hats off to Johnny Football, okay. stepping in for Joey Football. Um, then there are some X-Factor quarterbacks that I want to talk about. Ethan Hamby from Macomb, Dakota, and Ethan Gajewski from Allen Park. These are two guys that really helped their teams grab that district championship last week. Uh, in both of those cases, we know both of those quarterbacks have great uh, uh, you know, tandems in the backfield with them. When you're talking about Gajewski, he's got the, the human tsunami scenario Hamilton. When you're talking about Ethan Hamby, he has Mr. Catastrophe, Caden Sloan. But in order for those two teams to win the district title, they needed Hamby and Gajewski to play, you know, the best football of the season for them. They're both trending in the most positive directions for their careers. Uh, Gajewski had the starting job as a sophomore, had to kind of take a step back as a junior, and now he's having a, a, a just a knockout senior season. Stay heady, stay tuned. What up, stay tuned? Hamby has been improving all year, getting better every game. And I expect, again, I've said it before, I expect a big senior season from Hamby, but he was the true X factor in Dakota, turning that whole season around. Um, and then let's finish off with uh, some West Side dime droppers, Mason McKenzie over at Caledonia, looking great, uh, displaying outstanding field vision, great touch on his passes. We got some flower dimes coming out of Roseville, Robert Salter, a junior quarterback got those uh, Panthers, their district title. Uh, we got some Thunder Thumb Dimes coming out of Cross Lex and Jake Townsend. I've loved him since uh, I saw him in the offseason last year, uh, looking great as a senior for Cross Lex. And then I just want to give one final shout out. Over at Cedar Springs, Aiden Brunin having the, the playoff a run that you only dream of. And uh, they're having a great run, Cedar Springs, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the, the, you know, we have the X factor and then you got the A factor in Aiden Brunin. So lots of quarterbacks making names for themselves in the postseason. I love shouting them out. All right. Thank you, Scott. That was great. It is a regional championship weekend, people. And here are some of the matchups we'll be filming here on the State Champs Network. We already alluded to it, but two Division I Mac Red Dynamos will score off in Sterling Heights as 9-2 Stevenson will host 8-3 Macomb, Dakota. The Cougars have won six straight since her Week 5 31-16 loss to Stevenson. Also in Division I, another rematch. 10-1 West Bloomfield's sole loss on the season was a Week 1 shocker when the Lakers fell 35-17 to Rochester Adams. The Highlanders are unbeaten, and we'll see if that tricky Veer offense will propel them to the state semifinals. In Division II, a pair of 10-1 teams going at it. Traverse City Central at Caledonia. Central's lone defeat to DeWitt, Caledonia to Rockford. So two teams still going strong in the playoffs. This game will be played at Granville. Back to Division I for yet another rematch that will be a Saturday afternoon clash. 9-2 Dearborn Forts and traveling to 10-1 Belleville. I personally witnessed the first matchup in which Belleville won a two-point game to KLAA East foes looking to get to the semis. In Division II, 7-4 Roseville having their best season in school history. First time regional finalists as they take on defending D2 state finalists, Catholic League champs, undefeated Warren D. LaSalle. Can the Panthers pull off the upset? Check it out at Wayne State Saturday afternoon. Also in Division I, maybe the matchup of the week. Two unbeaten teams as Grand Blank hits the road as they face the Rams of Rockford. Each team has a Mr. Football candidate. This should be a good one. Scott, lots of rematches. Yeah, I just want to point out Roseville. That 7-4 and four record is a little deceiving. I believe at least three of those losses are forfeit losses. So they're at least 10-1 uh, and one right now. They're having a great year. Robert Salter, uh, I, I mentioned him in my... my you know, dime dropping yeah. segment talking about quarterbacks. Uh, Robert Salter just having a great season, kind of taking that team on his back, uh, having, uh, you know, that offense is humming. Uh, I, I think that their season might be coming to a yeah. close when they run into a buzzsaw. That's De La Salle, but that's not taking anything away from the season that Roseville had. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk just a quick second about the rematch from week one, West Bloomfield versus Rochester Adams. Uh, you got two of the most dynamic dual threat quarterbacks in Metro Detroit going at it and uh, Requez Nance and Parker Pico. 
But then on the other side of the ball, you have two of the best pass rushers in the whole state going toe to toe when you're talking about Michael Williams, 23 sacks on the season, going for the state record, which is 26, the outside linebacker from the L boys. And then Alex DeGreek, the Ivy League bound defensive end from the Highlanders. He's going to Harvard. Uh, he has about 17 or 18 sacks right now. Wow. And he is a sack monster. Yeah. Just a kid that gets into the backfield, wreaks havoc. Uh, so that should be really exciting, kind of chess match, game within a game. And then, you know, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Macomb, Dakota, it's gonna be a war. Uh, Stevenson went to the Final Four two years ago, got embarrassed last year in the district finals by West Bloomfield. They've obviously used that embarrassing loss as motivation uh, going into to this season. And those that three-headed monster of a, of a senior, uh, you know, triple, triple lethal weapon yeah. in at Kayakowski, Ramsey, and, yeah. and Madonna. Yeah. Uh, and then Dakota's having the season where it looked like it was going to be a, a, a season that no one remembered, and it's turning into a season that a lot of people are remembering, including Mr. Catastrophe, Caden Sloan, and Ethan Hamby, the up-and-coming field general uh, for, for, the, for the Cougars. And then quickly, just 10 seconds or less, Fortson's beat Cast Tech. Can they beat Bell? Yeah, it went down to the wire last time. Uh, Alex Osman, Antonio Gates Jr., they got the weapons. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would say right now, if, I, if you know, I put the line, if there was a line yeah, at it, right. Belleville by about five or six. Okay. But I think Fortson definitely has a chance at pulling the upset. I encourage you to vote in the Mr. Football and Amble races at statechampsnetwork.com. Read his blogs, the State Champs Scout Team blogs. And good luck to all teams competing this weekend. For Scott, I'm Lauren. We'll see you. State Champs Extra Point presented by Lawrence Technological University and Lawrence Tech Athletics. For everything LTU, visit ltu.edu. You can recruit yourself to any of Lawrence Tech's collegiate athletic teams by visiting ltuathletics.com. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. And... Hungry Howie's, famous for flavor.